August 8, 2015. And um, I have with me Gurudan. Hi, Gurudan. Hi, Hello. Sabrina. Hello, Gurudan. Hello, thank you, Sabrina. Thank you for joining. Hey, to the Buddha. Hello. Thank you for being with me. Um, all right. Tuba Buddha says that he can see and has no microphone. So, Tuba Buddha, you can just type in and others can read your messages. Or I can read your messages. All right. Today we have an introductory video, introductory webinar for new people who are new to everything. They are light workers, but they don't know about aliens much. Is it thinkable? No, we are so much immersed into our own group uh, society of light workers. We all talk about Bashar, so everybody knows what aliens are. But here locally, in Chicago, 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 I discovered there there are light workers, perfect light workers, perfect healers, very educated. You know, absolutely blank about aliens, no whatsoever, no exposure. How is it possible? Uh, I guess bubble realities. They are just living in a different bubble. But when our bubbles merged, when uh, when we met, they were interested and they asked to talk about aliens. Do the introductions. Unfortunately, I don't see them here joining. I guess they are not that technically equipped. They like to walk and uh, ride a metro elevated way, elevated CTA metro here, and you know, do things in person. They are not as uh, wired up as we are. But I, I will send them the recording and they will watch later. So, hey guys in Chicago and girls and Light workers, this is for you on your request. Before we go into the specifics, um, I have a little announcement. Mm. So we have the website, which is humancolony.org, and we have uh, our Google Hangouts, which are on Google Plus. So you, we all, you know, we I immersed in their Google's way of doing their uh, Google Plus things. So, find us there. We are called Human Colony, abbreviated to Hugh Colon, H U L uh, H U C O L O, Hugh Colon. And uh, it's a unique word, so it's easy to find us. Join us there, and you will get the announcements and invitations. And we also have daily ongoing webinars uh, and hangouts, video hangouts in this format. So, some of them are broadcasted, and many more of them are. More or less private, and they're not broadcasted, not recorded. People just hang together. So in addition, and it's all wonderful, but I was just thinking that there is no edited, edited, uh, structured, prettified pages or things. Like there are books which are long, there are individual posts here and there, but it all is kind of drowning in the flow, drowning in the flow. So newsletter has its own quality that we can format it, edit it, make it mm, authored, 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 censored, authored, picked up best things. So how about we just start doing our newsletter? And luckily there are people who join me in this endeavor already. And thank you, Safira, for contributing your materials. And thank you, others, for volunteering to work together. So. I'm thinking about doing a newsletter once a month, more or less, and each of the newsletters will be led, authored, censored, edited by a volunteer. So first one I volunteer to do, and then when the system is set up and the structure is set up, I would invite others to step forward and drive their next newsletter. So it will be one newsletter will be very different from uh, from another. The structure might be the same, but the tastes might be very different. What is my taste? I like I like everything very light. I like Slava Slava's pictures, very light, very elevated, nothing dark. That's my taste. And then the messier the better. But I would pick only the high vibration, high vibration articles, very. Enlightened, poetic, romantic. That would be my preference. But also, I would kind of 
go into history and stuff and tell how the human colony was started, how to navigate the south side, all the technology, technological things, how to join hangouts. So a lot of introductory things and also blessings and stuff. So that's my plan for newsletter. I don't know when I will finish it. Hopefully in a few weeks, but we'll see. It depends how you guys will volunteer and submit your materials. So I invite everybody to join who is interested in working with us. And we are hanging together on, on Skype. So to get knocked to me on Skype, my Skype address is max, M-A-X, 2040507. And I will in, uh, connect you to, to the group where we discuss the newsletter. And I will connect you to Google Doc where we edit it together. Also, if you want to submit materials by email, my email is max at humancolony.org. Send me the materials for the newsletter. If, they, if I don't include them in the current one, maybe someone else, the next editor will include it in the next ones. So we'll kind of dump everything together so people can um, pick and choose what they want to publish. And we want to update people on the galactic news. So that would be a galactic news newsletter, whatever happens in the past month or so, the news on from the colonies and stuff. The end of the announcement. Uh, Sabrina and Dan, do you have any announcements before we start? No, I don't believe so. All right. And I, I apologize. I think I'm overlapping with somebody else's webinar. Uh, so if do you know which webinar is going in parallel? Do you know? Um, something was announced. So if I will check. Yeah, yeah right. actually that that's um, that brings me to that point. Um, yeah. that maybe please check make sure that others oh, others oh, time you know when you when you plan to do a webinar so they don't overlap. Yeah, I'm sorry. I No, no, no. I just picked the, the yeah, I picked the time which was, you know, I had an opening. I didn't want to split the Saturday in the, in the middle, and the morning was already taken. So it was kind of the only choice I had. I apologize for that. But, you know, it's nice so everybody else can watch the other webinar. Yeah. All right. Um, yes, Diamond Christ Crystalline Heart. Yeah, we send them blessings, and we are part of one crystal. We are one. And with that, we start. Um, so light workers and aliens, and also I was asked to, to mention the DNA. So I invite any discussion and questions. Uh, where do we start? We, we, we will start from, say, what, how I usually start with people who are enlightened, but you know are not into aliens at all. Um, I start from, I guess, a little bit of my story, how I came to that. Uh, for me, it was a logical choice. I was researching the healing arts, healing arts and bio biology and therapy with light. And this uh, interest brought me to the book of Lean McTaggart. I wish I could type here. I guess I could. It's a little bit slow. All right, Lean McTaggart. Um, it's called The Field. If you just type it in Google, Amazon, The Field, you will, you will find it. Yeah, and um, this book was ground shaking for me as a scientist because it was it brought to one place many very uh, borderline fringe scientific discoveries which demonstrate that our reality is essentially a matrix which is sort of shaking and sometimes it kind of gives in to magic. So the, the, where the science can kind of put its hand on, on research can put its hand on on magic and things which are non-material like like the fields and stuff, like quantum effects and stuff. Something which is closer to science fiction than the you know traditional material reality, 3D reality. And when I finished that book, uh, which which is really good, um, just next thing was like next few minutes I was thinking if that is possible if the reality is not as real as it seems how about I check 
about aliens. It was kind of very logical conclusion. Before that, it was not very practical. But after you just think that reality is not very real, then hmm, let's research the aliens. And I'm very good in researching new topics. My best way of doing that is to Google first and then go on YouTube and search YouTube and basically surf, surf like a surfer, surf YouTube. Um, and that's what I highly recommend you. Like if you want to just check it out, how do you check it out? You just start, start surfing and pick the videos which have a lot of likes and which uh, feel good, which feel good to you on the topic, on the topic. So if you show research aliens, just you know, click on one, scroll to the middle, usually I scroll somewhere to th uh, one third into the video or and then two thirds in the video. I kind of scroll back and forth until I kind of sample it. And if I like what I see, I stay there. If I don't like, in a few seconds, I, I, I skim, I s go to the next one, I go to the next one within the area. Within, and if I find something good, I watch it usually from the middle to the end. If it's really good, I watch from the beginning to the middle, and I watch everything which is linked to this video. So it's, you know, if you found a found goal, don't go away. Research things around. Research things connected. Like, for me, it was uh, very important to listen to Project Camelot. Camelot. Project Camelot. It's another keyword which is amazing. Some of their videos are really, really good. Mm. Uh, Collier, Alex Collier, Alex Collier was my recent discovery, but I really like him. I, uh, I think I discovered a lot him a long time ago, and that time I wasn't sure if I believe his gentleman, but, but now I do. Now what he says, and what he said in the past, is perfectly matching what I know. All right, so you do your research, and uh, I just started research, and it was faces of the aliens, videos of UFOs and uh, crop circles. And faces of the aliens, so, some of them are absolutely fake. You, you know, I'm used to that. I'm used to digging through dirt and finding pieces of evidence. Like in Soviet Union, it was 99.9% .9 was absolute nonsense. And you just get used to that. OK, there is 99.9% .9 fakes and nonsense. And between that, on the shelves of the libraries and on the shelves of friends' houses, sometimes written by hand, sometimes typed on a typewriter, you find truth, you find true gold. So that was, for me, the search through alien files. Most of that is nonsense, but between that, you find just absolutely true account, accounts. And, and some of them, you just can't fake it. You cannot fake it. You know, some people just are so, when you see that on the video, they are the witnesses. They are so crying and so real. They are so real that you start believing it. And here is a key word, command, uh, Commander Seti, Commander Sunny Seti, Commander Sunny Seti. It's uh, a person who has a incarnation, a soul of a gray. Actually, it was, I think it was a Yael, a Yael gray. And uh, she remembers the past life. She has a connection to to the Greys, and uh, uh, she's absolutely real. S Commander Sunny said you. All right. Um, so first, first evidence for me is obviously crop circles, because everything else, like you for sightings, you can't reproduce. How to reproduce? The one person who there are a few people who can reproduce. They invite aliens, and the the aliens come, come. On invitation, it is Stephen Greer, and there are a couple more people on YouTube who really can say, "Now let's invite the aliens," and they kind of meditate. They have the connection, and the aliens show up in the sky. It's rare. It is very rare. It's really hard to reproduce. But crop circles is something which is it's absolutely reproducible. They every year. About one, two, three crop circles per week appear, mostly around Stonehenge, but also in different countries, including Russia, America, Europe, Australia. Uh, most of them are on the crops. Uh, some of them are on the snow. Some of them are on lakes, um, and um, and some of them are huge and 
there is a whole community that watches them, especially in uh, in England, uh, around the area of Stonehenge. They have the system of announcements, so whenever the crop circle is noticed, many people, like hundreds of people, drive there and check it out. And uh, when you start researching them, you, you look at the videos, they explain how you tell apart human-made crop circle and real crop circle. And there are, you know, there is one video how it was made. I'm, I'm sure they're made in different ways. There are magic ways of making them. But one video shows orbs making the crop circle, and it's beautiful. And it looks very believable. I, I think that's how it, it, it is formed in, in many cases. It is something transdimensional, and it, it has its own magic. All right. And then I... Uh, I did a lot of research, read a lot of books, I read a lot of accounts, watched tons of videos. Obviously Bashar was key for me. Bashar is, check out Bashar on YouTube if you haven't before. Bashar is our favorite teacher. Uh, it is an alien consciousness uh, which channels, speaks through a medium. A lot of information about the aliens come through channelers, and these are basically mediums, trans channelers, mediums which get into trance and invite an alien consciousness um, to visit. Uh, and that alien consciousness comes through, comes into the body, and speaks using person's voice and person's actually mind to communicate. And Bashar is great. It's um, oh, he's exceptional speaker, exceptional. I don't know anyone who speaks as well, who is as good public speaker as Bashar. Um, and sometimes, you know, when you hear channelings, you just it's so alien, so foreign. You just realize it is, it is, it is real. It is in in most cases, it is real. In most cases, it, it is real. Uh, the ones which are not as good sometimes is when uh, there is too much of the person left over and too little of the outside consciousness comes in. So the channel bec channeling becomes polluted. It's a mix of, it's like poor connection to outside and it's more of the ego, ego coming out. But, but even those channeling sometimes, you know, sometimes it's worse and sometimes it's bad. Almost no one fakes it. Almost no one fakes it. All right. Uh, so then the, the, the usual question, which you know every normal person would ask, a uh, normal person would ask, is if the aliens are here, why don't they show up? Why don't they just come and you know show up around White House or show up to me? They say until I see it in person, I don't believe. Um, so there are, you know, tons of answers to that. But basically, the main answer is that the aliens which are around here on Earth, they are, absolute majority of them are not from this world. They are not from this dimension. They are magic. They are from the other dimension. They are just basically from a different world. In their world, they are more or less physical. But in our world, they appear only as shadows usually, as spiritual projections, as ghosts, as holograms. It takes uh, technological effort for them to to appear, for the saucers to appear. So they're not really from here, and, and that's why most of the people don't see them. But uh, But they are watching, and they are present and they are influencing the, the events here, influencing the politics, the weather, the seism uh, seismic activities and stuff of that sort. The next questions people ask very often, the next second question is, you know, what's their agenda, what do they really want? And what they do they really want is, you no, know, there is a simple question and there is more complex question and the more complex is mind-blowing. But the simple answer, okay, answer, simple answer is they want to help. Many of them are very good, nice, and they see that we are close to suicide 
as a civilization and they want to help us to go through their transformation without without killing ourselves that's a simple answer and it's very true uh, now the second thing they the people ask is why don't they just show up and uh, and be done with that then we'll start communicating and the obvious answer is first our military don't don't really want the aliens to become known because if humans realize that the aliens are here and the aliens have super strong technologies super powerful then why would anybody fund the military budgets for developing outdated weaponry right uh, that's very practical I mean if, if there is no aliens then they you know anybody can pretend that their weapons are practically absolutely needed for defense but if the aliens are around especially the peaceful ones who can uh, manipulate things from distance then all our weapons make make much less sense and in, from other also from other perspectives they make make very little sense and the second answer why they don't show, don't show, up, show up is because you know everybody knows that our eco economy is shaky very shaky and it it is predicted by our futurists politicians and by the aliens that if they show up just like that it will cause uh, a lot of emotions in human society a lot of religious beliefs would be shaken and uh, that would cause the economic crisis which would possibly very likely cause the complete collapse of economy and complete complete collapse of economy will cause a lot of suffering especially in um, big cities especially in big cities if economy collapses you know I lived through, through a collapse of Soviet economy in Moscow and uh, we was that close that very close to to complete disaster like when the light goes off in the middle of the evening or the water stops running it's uh, you know in hot weather or the hot water stops running in cold weather it's close to the disaster all right um, so the aliens are waiting and waiting and the more third answer why they don't show up is that uh, our choices are actually respected so if humans collectively don't want them to show up and if humans collectively don't um, invite them to come then they don't they wait for consensus invitation from us they want for official invitation from world powers world politicians authorized elected officials and basically they want the humans to invite them which might surprise some but uh, you know that's how things are done usually right you know you don't come into somebody else's community without an invitation um, all right the next complex ans answer which blows the mind why why the aliens are here and why they're interested is um, is really mind-blowing actually they want they want to for us for our world to transform and shift to their reality they, it's it's possible for our realities to merge so our reality merges with their reality and becomes one and this way they can enter without changing much into other reality because without transdimensional transfer you know we shift all together to their world and then we can blend blend uh, we can marry cross marry we can um, they can visit the earth becomes an open planet where all aliens kind of hang around and learn human culture humans travel around and and uh, cross pollinate their world so our genetics becomes mixed together and uh, most importantly we created a very rich ecological ecosystem social ecosystem and uh, natural ecosystem all right e natural ecosystem we didn't create but it was created here and developed here but social ecosystem also developed here that's more correct saying so they are eager to experience it 
and in their bodies they cannot do it. But when we shift to the higher dimension, we become worthy bodies for their souls to incarnate. And uh, especially the ones which are genetically related to us, they are eager to incarnate in us on a higher level. So that's the more sophisticated answer why they are interested. It's not egotistic for them, it's just, it's just wonderful the whole universe to experience humanity, human life, the earth life on a higher level. They are eager to see what will happen. It is possible that we will shift to the higher level sometime soon in the next maybe 200 years. And you already experienced the shift right now. Everybody knows that you know things change very fast. The world now is not as the world was five years ago, not as it was ten years ago. Things are changing fast. The humanity evolves really, really fast in many ways. All right, that's a brief introduction, and now I invite uh, your contributions. Uh, welcome, Roxy. Our main topic is what? How do we speak to light workers who are not? knowledge about aliens, they want to know more about aliens. My friends here, local friends, asked me to give a lecture about aliens. They are healers, light workers, but and they aware of many other things, but not the not the aliens, not their four dimensional beings. Anybody here? Guru Dan, Roxy, Sabrina, Tuba Buddha. I um, I haven't had that conversation with any light workers. I haven't uh, had opportunity to uh, approach that topic with anybody yet. Uh huh. So I um, I'm not sure how I would even approach that. I guess it would depend on their openness to the topic to begin with, and go from there. All right. Um, let me ask you then. Um, next question, which my friends usually ask: How do you know that they're good? What would you say? Well, there's some that are and some that aren't. You know, there's uh -huh. um, it's complex. Um, you don't go trusting into each and everything. Um, there is like a vetting process that you do with the information. Mm -hmm. to see if it resonates with you. Now, most light workers understand the word resonation, mm -hmm. and, and they can grasp that concept of if information is resonating with you, if you can allow it. Even if you don't believe it, you can allow it. Um, sometimes they need little proofs here and there, and sometimes you can provide them with that information. Um... Sometimes you can listen to things until they give you a reason not to resonate with them. All right, let's be more specific. You experience a presence in the room, and you have a suspicion that it is an alien in your room at night. How would you react to them? I would ask them their intention. Uh huh. Whether that be telep uh, using telepathy or just outright asking. You know, uh -huh. I would be mm -hmm. curious as to what kind of being they are mm -hmm. and see if they answer or not and then kind of go from there. Start start with the easy stuff. Yes. Basically, there is tons of answers. I mean, it's personal, obviously personal. You know, some aliens are pretty bad, no question. And some are. our friend Tuba Buddha here, uh, he has suffered from from uh, uh, negative reptilians. Uh, he can, he gave his story, already published it several times, so, so it's public, so I will repeat it briefly. But basically at some point the reptilians came to him and somehow tricked him into agreeing to, to agree. He didn't real, realize what he agrees to, but basically in their interpretation he agreed that they would uh, make a hybrid child from him and take this hybrid child to captivity in their world and his hybrid child served in captivity for about 18 years in their world until until he was released to good aliens so that was a personal tra tragedy for uh, 
for two bar Buddha and uh, you know we played a little part here just learning his history and and uh, applying or how do you say petitioning their the bad guys to to release the child um, obviously it was a trauma for the child as well um, now understand now speaking to our listeners understand that there is a law of attraction it is like a radio it's like a radio if you tune the radio to one wavelength you get everything nice and you tune the radio to another wavelength you get everything not nice it depends on which wavelength you tune into so when you are in the fear in a state of fear depression anger especially attractive for negative forces are rage righteous rage and jealousy jealousy Je jealousy paranoid jealousy those attract really negative energies really negative you invite when you're in a rage or other anger state which for many humans it's it's you know commonplace being angry uh, that attracts a lot of negative magic and negative entities they enter through these portals when you are you opening them now if you are in uh, in the balance positive balance positive love uh, positive mood peaceful joy balanced joy then these portals negative portals are closed but the positive portals are opened so if you are in a positive state of mind negative guys just don't enter uh, good guys enter and uh, they usually wait for their invitation and you invite them so that's how we know if we deal with good ones or bad ones by constantly interacting with them and feeling what we feel if we feel joy and feel of feeling of being sacred being in sacred magic space connected to God then we are connected to God and dealing with good energies that's that simple and here we come to the idea of human colonies so let me repeat my story with human colonies before we go there let me read what Tupa Buddha said Tupa Buddha just typed in uh, from what uh, Guru Dan can you read it Anybody can can you read it? Just my English. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, give me give me a moment here. I was on uh, okay. <laughs> juggling my microphone here. All right. Uh, he he comments um, from what he has learned. The good ones you have given permission to participate with them prior to incarnating here. They don't need to ask, but the negative ones have to ask. He says he gets a tone in his era. Ear ear. Oh, is that ear? Yes. Okay, that's a typo. For he gets a tone in his ear when it comes. I say these words. If you come from the light, it is all right. If you come from the dark, go away. The moment I say these words, the tone usually stops. I have added since learning of one of my children. Release all the children you have stolen immediately. Uh-huh. And the last word is no. And the all last right. word is no. All right, so thank you. Now I, uh, it makes sense, yes, I agree. Uh, now I tell a story how the human colony was started. So I research the aliens, and as a researcher, I usually try to stay balanced. I usually try to stay balanced. I accept everything and just look at it as it is, without prejudice. So I... Uh, look at different aliens and I was attracted to some of type of, of the gray aliens which seem to be very peaceful they are uh, their uh, their mission in uh, the galaxy is nurturing and I started at some point as I gave it gave some talks and I started the abductee support group so I interviewed several abductees, alien abductees. At that time, it was very active, real reasonably active. They had a lifelong experience of being abducted, like Tuba Buddha is. 
to Babuda has been abducted for his long, long years, and he has a sleeping mask, the breathing apparatus sleeping mask, and he labels his rubber bands on the mask with a marker, and when the bands are magically replaced with the new ones, he knows he has been abducted. So when marker is gone. And for him it was uh, you know, nice. He doesn't remember it, but but that was a clear, clear indication. Now, um, so I learned all about that. It's, it's a long story, but um, I realized that I want to visit the good ones. And I realized that they have their own pretty strong bureaucracy and rules and regulations and uh, very bureaucratic decision process, like very hierarchical decision process. So if you want to do something, usually you would apply for things and s wait for the decision. Sometimes, usually in their world, the decision comes fast, not like here, faster, much faster. But it's still uh, reviewed by committees. So I was... Uh, was told by many people that when I do Reiki, when I've been treated, there are aliens around me. Many people, they just tell me. So I got used to that. Uh, I had serious people from serious Pleiades, um, and they just tell me that, you know, my friends tell me that there are people from Sirius and Pleiades around me, the aliens. So when, at some point, it, I was in Reiki share. So what's, so what's Reiki? Reiki is a healing art when you place hands on other person and send healing energy. And Reiki share is when uh, there are three, four tables and some people get on the tables, they lay on the tables and others just place their hands and uh, treat, treat people and then you switch and so everyone who is into Reiki can uh, receive the Reiki and give Reiki. And also new people are coming and they learn Reiki. So that's a Reiki share. And there uh, was Jim Charles, our favorite Jim, and I just met him, and he was funny. He was a kind person, but uh, but he, uh, I wasn't sure I believed him, actually. Uh, he was simplistic, simple-minded, but I, I wasn't sure he was faking his simplicity or he's really simple. No, I know he's more simple, 99% simple, but, you know, he has his, uh, how do you say, uh, simple wisdoms too. Uh, all right. So, Jim said, "Hi, la, 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 la. I just learned Reiki. I do this funny Reiki, and uh, and I experienced his Reiki. It was pretty good. It was pretty good. It was pretty strong." And he said, "You know, someone is nearby, and it looks like an alien." I said, "Oh, I know that. No problem." And he said, "They want to speak to you." I said, "Oh, wonderful. Let's speak." And then uh, this dude came and he said that he is a gray and he comes on my invitation. It's another story. I invited them before. He comes on my invitation and they watched me for a while. For about At that point, it was about 10 years he watched me, but he closely watched me for about several years and, uh, and then uh, blah, blah, blah. Very short conversation. And I said, I'm a, like right away when, ex when they introduced themselves, I asked if they are good and then if they're good, I asked, uh, I applied to visit their ships. I submitted my application, basically. And this do answer that um, uh, it's, it might be possible, they don't know, he doesn't know, but uh, they need to check if my physiology is compatible and say, I approve the test, you can test me. Um, and that was about it. It was a pretty short conversation because it was in, in a common room, people. I don't know if anybody heard it, but it was in a common room. Uh, at that time, we didn't advertise it. It was something new to us. Uh, and also, they said that I, they feel that I'm very happy. I, I really was happy. It was my first conversation with aliens, one to, like one to one direct conversation. I was really, really like looking for that for several years, for three years. So next morning, I woke up. I had, uh, I had uh, one, two, three. I think seven, seven spots. They looked like. Uh, B bytes, B bytes in a geometric pattern, one, two, three, four, and then it was an angle. It wasn't super perfect, but it was pretty perfect. And um, it was right here, and um, it stayed there for half a year. Half a year I had it. And if I had doubts, I just looked at myself, and it was a nice proof that things 
happen physically. It was nice proof. I had it on my body. Um, and then very soon in one of next conversation, I said to them, actually I said to them, can you, uh, you know, talking through Jim is wonderful, but you know, we cannot say much. It's very brief conversation. And also at that time it wasn't easy on Jim. He had to do a lot of effort. It was sort of difficult to channel for him at the beginning. So I said, how about, can you check my email? I would create an email account for you and I'll just write into you by email. I said, all right, let's do that. So I started, started writing to them and I wrote a series of letters where I proposed that they take me, my family, up there. And I didn't want my kids to be lonely, so I said, how about we take other families who want to come, volunteers. And we found a colony there. And then we will talk and um, learn each other, and then we will together make a plan how to save the Earth. It was kind, kind of obvious. And then we kind of will start uh, many different projects. I proposed several obvious projects, how we spread good information to Earth, uh, train people on the ground, and train the aliens, and basically do a peaceful transformation of the Earth culture to, to the new open culture. So how do we establish the first contact? And, and more importantly, what do we do after the first contact? How do we prevent the collapse and uh, make it a successful transformation and accept alien technologies, free energy, teleportation, transportation, free food, all of that. So that was a nice book and uh, it became a book, a series of letters and it, I called it Welcome to Earth, a Guide for Aliens, book number three which I wrote. Alright, so that was my introduction to the aliens. Mm. Another experience I had, after a while, uh, I invited them to visit me and um, they visited. It was a Blue Pleiadian, a short, short, uh, round, short, round Blue Pleiadian of Lakesh's tribe, of Lakesh's civilization, a friend of Lakesh who we channeled. And again, it was again the question of interpretation. When the alien comes to you, what do you do? Um, it was a nightmare. Uh, very strong one. Uh, all my life I had this kind of nightmares when everything is so big and I'm so small, I'm squished between the planets and uh, there is some sort of catastrophe or similar to catastrophe thing and that, um, how do you call it, the distortion of time and space where I'm small and everything is so big and I don't, I'm so powerless was always a nightmare. So that nightmare didn't come to me for a while and when it came I was scared first. I just remembered my childhood nightmares and then I realized oh maybe it's our aliens visit and maybe it's just uh, just a side effect of alien visitation. And then I decided that I wouldn't be scared. I will just take it as it is. I, I have the same perceptions. I just interpreted them differently. That alien energy, alien four-dimensional energy wasn't as stopped. To be, I just made the decision not to be scared of, of four-dimensional visitation. Side effects of their technology. I decided if it's technological, there is nothing I can do. I can just wait and see what happens. And when I stopped, stopped fighting after a couple of minutes, I just accepted it. I was completely awakened in, at night and um, that second body entered my body and I felt I'm present in two bodies at the same time. One, my body and another body, very, very real, was very short and I had fat hands, like, like, like really fat hands, very short fingers and I can move, I think I could have moved both bodies but I didn't move a lot, I just kind of sh moved my fingers on my real body and realized it was just, it was even stronger, I realized that I have control of both bodies. One one body mine is still in my control and another body was somebody else's which entered me. I wanted to con do the conversation but it wasn't established so, so after about 15 minutes it was gone but uh, it was absolutely real and I was absolutely awakened. It was nothing, 
nothing of their nothing uncertain. It was very certain. I remember it very, at that point. I remember it very very clearly, and I still I'm sure it was real. But many others, uh, I you know, there there were abductees, life, lifelong abductees, which I interviewed, and there, these are interviews are uh, on YouTube. So there are people who had much more detailed and profound experiences. They visited, visited the ships, saw the aliens, uh, had operations down on them, had implants and stuff. Uh, so, so this is um, uh, for for us, it's real. Yeah. Um, I want to go to a topic of implants. Before I go there, I invite more comments and questions. Roxy, Grudan, Amy, do you want to talk about anything? No, I'm, I'm good with everything you've been talking about there, Max. All right, thank you. All right, so implants. Uh, an important thing to realize is that there are different groups of aliens, different alliances, and they usually don't touch subjects of each other. So if I am a subject of a certain alliance, I have association with certain alliance, then, uh, then the others would see my signature, energy signature, implant signature, and wouldn't touch me. That's basically how things are usually in uh, this period of time. They kind of respect the subjects of each other. So one of the purposes of implants is that they allow to trace us and, uh, and bad guys wouldn't touch us because we are sort of protected by, by others. Uh, I don't have any you know, very good proof. I don't have evidence that I have implants, but when I speak to them through channelers, uh, from Jim mostly, they they tell that I do, tell me where I have them, and uh, and um, when I get new ones, I usually ask them and they explain. But but you know there were quite obvious things when you know few times there were implants when um, they were I could really touch them and they hurt, so I would complain to the aliens. They would either either remove or just say wait a little bit, it will get adjusted and uh, and will stay there without bothering you anymore. And same with Jim, they inserted several implants to improve his channeling abilities. And, and you can see now they were very successful in improving his channeling abilities. He's really channel, channels great now for a long time without being, getting exhausted. Um, implants, usually these days, they are very advanced. They are organic. They are not metal, not hard, not electronic. They're electronic, but organic electronics. And they have uh, uh, amazing qualities. There is one research of, of implants who saw how the implant tried to escape when he opened their su subject that it was in the foot. He tried to capture the implant, and the implant just sneaked away, tried to sneak away and move around to, to avoid being captured. <laughs> They're so advanced. Uh, all right. Um, another applications of these implants are to monitor the health status, like the you know everything on about the health, and um, also when they do dimensional transfer, when they transfer us to their ships, it uh, helps to to do transdimensional. They use like uh, them as uh, reference points to to better do the uh, transfer. It's like um, beaming up. When they beam up using transporters, they need these reference points to align the the patient better. Now, I'm I'm not sure I have been taken ever. At least I don't have any evidence of that. I don't remember uh, physical physically being taken. All right. Um, other implants, obviously, negative guys and human uh, negative guys use implants for mind control, it's obvious. And the greys, they do different things which we don't know exactly what they are, but they sort of 
uh, program the their subjects to to take over the planet. So that is also it's kind of a mind control thing. It's also uh, a concern, but we don't we don't deal with negative guys. We don't focus on negative guys. We work with good guys and we focus on positive 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 things. So we actually invite implants and um, we volunteer to get them. We volunteer to and they usually ask us and um, uh, they're nice. Our our guys are nice. We deal with the good um, aliens, uh, alliance of good aliens and um, they usually don't do things without asking us first and without us volunteering first. Right? And uh, it's 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 a state of happiness and uh, you know and and balance actually. We trust them; they trust us. Um, the human colony. So when I invited, I proposed take us to uh, to a place and establish in a colony. They actually did it. They they sort of created a place which we are visiting. And it is a human colony. Obviously, it's not a real colony. It's not us colonizing the, the space. It's more like uh, a playground for uh, for humans, human volunteers to mingle with with aliens. Uh, initially, they were saying that they are taking us physically, but after a while, they they said that they are taking us as spiritual projections. So we are not physically away from our locations and we don't really remember a lot about our visits which I accept uh, I'll explain later why why this change of the story is not as concern as concerning as it was as it could be um, or maybe I explain it now basically it looks like our, our reality and all the reality which is connected to the aliens is not fully real in terms of human reality. It is real in terms of alien reality. It is from one perspective it's all a dream, all the all air yeah um, more like legend confabulation but from other perspective it's very real. And it is a whole story what is real and what is not in this world. But basically, we can s we normally are in many different states. We shift between different vibration, different states. During the day, we are in one state, and we are very grounded. We are very connected to physical world. But at night, we are shifting to a dream world, and everything is absolutely different. We don't. We can't even translate our dreams into human language because they're so different. So it's a different dimension. They are not very translatable to human language. Most of the things that happen in the dreams are multidimensional. So that maybe is one of explanations. One, when we remember dreams, are they are black and white, or in my case, it would be more like light orange and black color, light orange black color. They are. Uh, less dimensional because when uh, the story happening in a dream is translated to human language it collapses into a lower dimensional state so we lose a lot of information and also when you are in highly spiritual state when you go in highly spiritual spiritual place highly, sp highly spiritual uh, congregation you shift to another reality so when you when we are together when the light workers are together and are in high and high spirits we are much closer to aliens and the reality the stories of aliens become much more real so when we are in a dreamy state we are closer to the to their reality and when we shift back to 3d to material things it becomes less real it does it doesn't mean that it's always less real it just means that from different perspective it looks differently and it is uh, the very fundamental nature of this world, of this matrix. From different perspectives, different things look differently. So some people live all their life in very physical understanding of the world. Their understanding and beliefs are very material, and they can never experience anything miraculous, anything magic. 
and other people live most of their life in um, in that magic space and higher dimensional space and uh, the laws of logic, the laws of truth, the laws laws of of um, time and cause consequences, cause consequence relationships are just different there. And um, most of us are just shifting back and forth, and it's absolutely natural, absolutely natural. So there is nothing too suspicious that in in the fact that the the story changes there because it's just the quality of that of that um, their reality. It's it's more like a dream dream quality. It's not very material. Their their dimension has properties of material world, but but much more fluid, much more flexible, and the time there is much more fluid and flexible. Any more comments here? Yes, um, I, I came in a little late. I was just wondering um, what the first topic was. Um, the second one was the um, implants. Yes. That was the, the first one, is that the first one? The main topic is introduction for light workers about okay. the aliens. Many light workers uh, haven't heard about the aliens and never thought about them, so we are just trying to introduce the basic concepts. That's great for me because I'm I'm a beginner, so I need all oh, the help nice. I can get. You're welcome. Thank what you. what questions do you have? Please um, voice some questions. It's nice to have a dialogue. Um. Okay. Um. So you're saying, um. When they when they do take us into their ships, then we're not physically being taken. It's just our astral selves, basically, in our in our dream state. Um, it varies. It can be that or that. Um, I I have met real abductees who have been physically taken to the ships. Um, uh, there was there are some li lifelong abductees um, who some of them are. Actually, they were not abductees. It's just the word abductees. They were they volunteered okay. to go, and they have been physically taken. Right. I know several people who have been physically taken, and um, one of the most famous ones, and I, now I know he's real, is Alex Collier. Just research the story of Alex Collier. Well, I guess we will later type in the 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 spelling of that, or maybe under okay. the video check out. It's wonderful videos, wonderful reports of people who have been taken for that would be great. physically. And they have been absent here, and one of the stories is very mm, demonstrates the quality of the reality. So, one of the classical abductees, he has been taken. Actually, it, the story I heard it from several people independently. Taken, was absent for a while there, and when they returned him here, because it's from different reality, they missed the time and they entered themselves. Right. Entered, and not entered. Witnessed. When they enter, they witness themselves. They met themselves face to face. Oh, really? Uh huh. Wow. <laughs> because <laughs> of just time paradox, they they just messed up a time a little bit. Like there were a few minutes before, you know, when before they left. So you come if you come before you left, then you see yourself. Wow. So that was pretty pretty physical, and um, sometimes you have physical. Often you have physical marks after after this. Um, so-called abduction, and uh, and you meet people there. There is tons of experiences. Some people just remember everything. Some people remember a lot. I remember having a dream. I had a dream recently, but uh -huh. that's I I don't remember much of the dream other than waking up and looking at myself. Or I, I know I was laying on a, a a surgical table, and I looked over to my side, and I saw myself. In their um, some sort of um, technical equipment, and I could see myself with a strange mask on, but I knew that like I wasn't, you know, I knew that I that's what had happened when I woke up. Did you see any uh, any any people? No people. I was just in an empty room. Mm -hmm. I I wondered where everybody was. Mm -hmm. It was just kind of a white, um, sterile, empty room with very little machinery. But like, uh, I had an odd mask on my face. Was it a human-looking machinery or alien-looking machinery? Um, that that's kind of fuzzy. But I, 
I'm pretty sure it was alien looking machinery. At least the mask on my face had a whole bunch of tubes coming out of it. It was different from like a um, from a from a human surgical mask. I see. You know, I see. It was completely different, actually. I see. Um, I guess it would help you, but um, and everybody else. Um, so we, uh, I, I established that site humancolony.org, and one of the key features of the site is that you can write uh, write to the aliens and uh, apply for different things. Uh, first application you can do is um, to visit the human colonies. Basically, it's um, a group of friendly alien races. Uh, Arcturians, Pleiadians, Yael, Lyrans, uh, and friendly reptilians. I think they're called Lashunda. And Fendorians. Now it's six races already. Uh, they're nice. They have that human colonies where they treat people very nicely. And, um, and people work on developing the contact, developing the tele telepathic abilities, uh, communicating with hybrid children, communicating with the aliens, um, th planning the first contact, making the videos about the, the aliens and preparing to broadcast these videos to the humanity and many other things. Right. And developing the healing abilities, working on um, healthy things. So these visits are spiritual. At the moment they are not physical right. yet. I remember um, that I wasn't scared because, I mean, it was just after I signed up. Um, I signed up for all of them, to, you know, for whatever experiences they wanted to give me that they thought would be beneficial. And I, I know from my channeling that I was on Colony 2, so... Perfect. So, yes, and that's one of the best, one of the best. We have several best evidences that it's real, that people, after they sign up, they be get experience. They get visited, become visited, and some of them have very profound experiences of uh, visitations and interviews with aliens. And sometimes they don't realize that it is an interview because it's so friendly and so chatty, but uh, but these are actually interviews. The aliens come, usually Pleiadians or Yael, and in, in spirit or in holographic projection, they come at night and um, and chat together, and they have fun. And then they decide how, how to assign this person, what, what this person can, which project the person can do, and so on. Right. I would like to know, actually, more of my dreams so I knew who, you know, or what I was with, because all I remember, again, is just being on the table. Um, I guess, ask Jim. <laughs> okay. Uh, if anybody can pass this question to Jim, uh, usually we have the answer. I, I will write to him and we'll... So your name is uh, Amy, right? Yes, Amy. Yeah, if you... A Amy, just just email to me I will, uh, a short question and I will forward to Jim and we'll see what he answers. Okay, thank uh, you so much. The, yes. Um, next one. Um, you can apply for donating your DNA to a hybridization project. So it's a nice hybridization project which is run now only by four, four human volunteers. So they don't abduct anyone without, they don't take anyone and they don't do anything without first people volunteering consciously in this, in this life, which is nice. In the past there were other projects where it was, um, it was with permission from the soul, but without asking the the, the physical mind. Now they uh, there are there is enough light workers who apply through our site, or they can if they can talk to aliens, they apply uh, through through directly telepathically and um, and volunteer. So I I obviously volunteered to donate my DNA, and after I did that, I woke up with a pretty strong pain in my. Um, in place where they took sperm, so so I, I I wasn't happy about the quality of their surgical work. I mean, taking sperm shouldn't be painful. Painful. I think they just did a poor job doing that. Um, so that was for me. It was another evidence, although uh, it actually went away pretty fast. But I I wasn't happy about the quality of their work. 
Uh, and I uh, have some information about uh, hybrid children as well. All right. Um, so the hybridization program, why do they do it? They hybridize us with themselves with different species, and there is many reasons for doing that. First, they want to improve humans, and we are certainly somewhat stuck in our development. We are, our development is delayed in a way that we don't develop telepathy. We should have developed telepathy by that time, but 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 haven't for many reasons. And part one of the reasons is genetic. Genetic. We we could be genetically more telepathic, but um, our genetics has been uh, altered in some ways, and it's not as clean as it should be. Not as uh, the, the basically telepathic properties were kind of diminished. We can be telepathic, but they were diminished through certain certain things, certain um, developments. So when we when they inject uh, hybridize us with the telepathic uh, races like Yael, Lyrans, Arcturians, uh, Siri, uh, Siri, uh, ones from Sirius, then uh, we become more telepathic. And um, and some of these hybrid hybrids are working among humans, and so many of them are part of our community. So we are hybrids, and not only we are hybrids; everybody is a hybrid. Uh, the aliens have been here in the past, and uh, modern humans are hybrids between earthly ancestors, earthly hominids, and alien alien ancestors. We all carry the genes of those races of Arcturians, Reptilians, Arcturians, Reptilians. I didn't. Somebody put it. There. Hey guys, somebody put that word reptilians in my in my. I didn't mean that to say, it, but yes, reptilians too. Arcturians, reptilians, Pleiadians, Yael, mm, Lyrans. Fin, I'm not sure about Findorians. Yeah, Findorians too, and uh, Elohim and others. Uh, historically, and that continued for all the centuries, and uh, some of the infusions were pretty recent. Some of these were artificial, basically they just came and infused some DNA and uh, when they took the DNA from two parents and added some alien and uh, put back into the into the mother and then the mother carries a hybrid child. I uh, actually met a, a child which had um, pure Pleiadian father, so he was half Pleiadian. And you can see from him that he was somewhat not from this world, very, very, somewhat alien, not very alien, very healthy, but somewhat alien. So, and uh, some of the people just, you know, some of their aliens just fall in love with humans and marry them and stay here on Earth. Some of the aliens um, in the past were refugees from the wars and they just made colonies here. Uh, because they just needed some place to live, and some of these colonies they didn't, ha they couldn't breathe human uh, earth, earthly air, so they had to create artificial uh, domes and live in kind of uh, protected environment. But they still would hybridize with humans to continue their bloodlines, and these colonies eventually give birth to different human races. So you, different human races are combinations of different alien genes with different earthly ancestors. So another reason for hybridization uh, program is to create hybrid children up there and place it in different places like create, populate new planets by hybrids from uh, us and others. And this creates different hybrid races related to, to us, and we are just one of several hybrid races. And and um, there is a strong artificial crossbreeding between different um, different uh, genetic designs. Okay, and one of these hybrid races is Yael hybrid race, and another hybrid race is. Sasani or Shakani, the people of Bashar. Max, may I ask you a question? Yes, yes, yes. 
Um, are there any races that you know of that are purely whatever they started out with? Or is everybody pretty much like hybridized in some kind of way? Yeah, Lurans are pretty pure. Yeah. Um, no, being a hybrid race is not is not uh, is not very frequent. It's um, it could be fifty to fifty or whatever ratio. I mean, there is a lot of races which are pure. You don't have to be hybrid. Uh, Bashar said that um, we are in several ways unique, but um, there is tons more of hybrid races which which um, which have you know. So the uniqueness of humanity is there are many unique things, but basically it's one of the hybrid races which went very far from spirituality, from psychic abilities, and from telepathy to such extent that we don't really have connection to the spirit. We have only few people per hundred, a few people per thousand who are psychic, who have connection to the spirits, who can speak to the spirits, who can visit spirits. So uh, the frequency of our psychics among people is lower than in other races. Many other races, they go into physical 3D life, but they still have very strong connection to God. And somehow by genetic manipulation and also by cultural manipulation, we are, many of humans are completely unaware of of spirituality and completely detached from, from the world of God. So that's the main unique property of human race. All right, and um, and also the next reason for the hybridization program is to for them to create a better vessel for incarnation. A better vessel for incarnation. Right now our vessels, they're okay for this time, for this place in evolution, but but to evolve further, it would help if we were a bit more advanced, if we had more telepathy, more of uh, psychic abilities, um, better connection. Uh, our veil is too strong, in part by design of our reality, in part by design of our genetic, genetic design. So that basically the, there is a rule also. It's it's in, in human society. It's quite quite natural, like. To visit America, you might need to have relatives here. If you have relatives, then you can visit America. And same with many other countries. And the same is with many other planets. So uh, the, the races which have relation to humans, like who are our ancestors, who have common ancestors with us, uh, they are permitted by the galaxy, galactic rules to, to help us to uh, take part in our development. Uh, so that's another reason why they volunteer to their DNA to inject, infuse into humans, so they have a relationship, and um, and then they uh, they can play our with our development better. It's uh, sometimes it's very selfish and sometimes it's very benevolent, like our friends do it mostly for benevolent purposes, not for selfish purposes. Any questions? Yes, yeah, so if we were left to how we are now, um, you know, when you were talking about telepathy and those kinds of things, you don't think eventually we would develop that naturally without having the infusions? Of course, yeah. Um, there are several proofs. I mean, when we speak about, you know, right now we were like talking to the beginners. But when you move to the understanding of the aliens, on that level, when we, when we believe the channelers, when we believe the aliens, when we understand the situation, on that level there are several proofs that uh, human genetics is sufficient to develop telepathy. It's uh, a combination of genetics and the nature of reality, co collective consciousness, collective choice on Earth. So when humans move to the other world, they become tons more telepathic. But really, to be fully telepathic, you have to be born and um, develop in um, in telepathic society. So it's partly very, very cultural. 
So some of our children uh, who has been taken with human genetics uh, are up there. They, as if they grow up on their planets, uh, they they are fully telepathic. And also, um, there are humans from the uh, Jesus time, from uh, around the first century AC. Is it AC? AD, first century AD, uh, who have been um, taken as slaves to other planets. It was at that time. It was, you know, they were in the, in the state where they need slaves. Um, later, uh, and this planet is, I forgot the name. It was through, through Zachariah, Zachariah's channeling. Uh, they, I think the other one. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm blanking on that. But basically, they have been taken to Pleiadian culture planets. And later, they were um, given rights and became citizens of these planets. This, uh, this also are fully telepathic. So if they just grow in a telepathic environment, they, they are fully telepathic. It's not, it's not that we are not capable of telepathy. But if we get boost in genetics, we can be telepathic even in that heavy, dense, Dimension, in so some some people are at least at least people are psychic in that dimension. So especially new children, new teenagers, they they are much more psychic than they were before, and some of that is due to change in vibration of the whole planet, or some of that is due to hybridization. Some of the some of us are more more alien hybrids than others. How about that? That's a proper formula. Yeah, I was asked to talk about a little bit about DNA. So first myth, again, it's not fully a myth. It's just an angle how you look at it. But first myth is that you can uh, have a multi-stranded DNA in this body, in this physical body. It's just a misunderstanding that uh, uh, that we are talking uh, 12-stranded and multi-stranded, uh, more than two strands of DNA. It's it's not in this dimension. The truth it is, it's not it's in this dimension. The proper understanding it's we are talking about reconnection to other strands of our soul. Basically, the human body has two stranded DNA, and the etheric body, the next one beyond the veil, closest to us. This this blueprint, this uh, aura body, etheric body, closer to astral body, this one has its own version of DNA, uh, etheric DNA. And so on, there are multiple bodies which kind of connect us to the oversoul and finally to God. So there is a complex series of interfaces in different planes of existence. And, each, and some of them have... Uh, DNA strands, which have their own etheric code of DNA. So when when uh, people are speaking about upgrading your DNA and activating your DNA, it means that your DNA, your physical two-stranded DNA, is connected to other two-stranded DNA and different other levels of existence. And when they are linked together, uh, multidimensionally, you get more strands activated. They, it's not that they don't exist, it's just they're not as accessible. When they become accessible, you become more integrated with your spirit, and that's um, positive, usually a positive thing. It's, yes, it's typically a positive thing. And, and that, you know, you grow into your spirit, and your spirit grows into you, and you become more integrated. That's the process of multi-strand activation. Our physical DNA is still two-stranded. There is a third strand which is known to scientists. It's not a full strand. It's usually a strand of RNA, which is a different molecule similar to DNA. And it fits into, between the two strands, there is a space. So there is two strands, and there is two strands, and there is a, two, two strands, right? There is space there to fit one more, one more one more strand, so it becomes three-stranded, but it's only short pieces. It's not the full chromosome. It's it is uh, it's very natural, and it's known to to mainstream scientists. There is nothing mysterious there. It's 
it's just part of how things are designed. It's it's well well known, nothing mysterious there. So we have two-stranded DNA, and sometimes the third strand just fits in. It's 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 RNA for certain signaling purposes. All right. Now people are confused about what is chromosome, what is DNA. Uh, uh, basically, chromosome is just a chunk of DNA, a big chunk. It's usually about few million, few tens of millions of uh, monomers of letters, few tens of millions. It's like 20 to 100 million letters uh, together are a chromosome. So DNA is made, made of letters which are called nucleotides or bases. And each uh, the bases are four kinds, A, G, C, and T. There are a few other modifications, but classical ones are for A, G, C, T. So our genome is three billion nucleotides. It's a program, three billion letters. It's like three gigabytes, three billion letters. In each cell, uh, there is that code well known to scientists. You can go to, to it's called genome browser on internet and just look at your, at human code. It's all well known already for about 14 years as well well understood at least on the on the letter of sequence on, on the level of sequence so this sequence in each cell it's yeah it's mind-blowing but basically each cell has a program of three gigabytes pretty big program and and that program defines our physical properties it's it's pretty physical but also the DNA is um, a single dimensional crystal Within this double helix, there is a so-called stacks of bases, stacks of bases, and the bases are A, G, C, and T uh, in certain order, which you know from the sequence. And this stack of bases has crystalline properties, which uh, is known to mainstream science, science to be very conductive to electricity, and is hypothesi hypothesized by alternative science that it is also a conductor of light, physical light, very physical. Uh, not proven yet, but quite possible because it is a crystal and many crystals are transparent. So it's, um, it's it would be very natural for that to be conductor of light. And also it could, that light could be um, pumped, pumped, energized by certain biochemical processes to make a laser. And when you make a laser within the DNA, a laser resonator, uh, it might have uh, transdimensional properties. And it now we're going to more like from science to to sci future science. Uh, that could be a transdimensional communication antenna. So our DNA could be a transdimensional communication antenna to connect us to a etheric body. Now the existence of etheric body is pretty obvious when you start researching it because people who work with energy healing arts can reproducibly diagnose it, feel it. So you use your own DNA, your own consciousness to touch it and in, in this space you can feel the aura. Some people see it with, with the eyes or third eye and Reiki healers can touch it and feel it with energies of their hands. So when you send your own, uh, own energy, you interact with the aura and you can um, feel the structure and function of some abnormalities in, in the etheric body. So as I understand, this etheric body also is pretty sophisticated and it has its own etheric DNA. It's, it's like a real body. It has its own function. So the property of our DNA it's one of the ways how our third dimensional body is connected to higher dimensional uh, bodies and finally to the soul, to our soul and to God through many, many interfaces and many sophisticated spiritual mechanisms which are much more multidimensional than we are. All right. Um, when people talk about past lives and ancestors, they confuse two different topics. One is your ancestral DNA. You are a child of your parents and grandchild of grandparents and so on. So there is a genetic inheritance. Every every generation there is genetic uh, transfer of information and recombining of that. You are not a copy of your parents. You are 
recombination of uh, different half of your DNA is from mother, half of your DNA is from the father. And those of us who are hybrids, they have infusion, so there is few more infusions of alien DNA. So it's uh, it's you have essentially two main parents and multiple more parents from aliens, usually from individuals, alien individuals, so if you're a hybrid. It's very genetic, it's very physical, it's, it can be sequenced, it can be read physically and uh, put in a 3 billion uh, sequence. All right? Uh, now, the spiritual uh, past lives, it's, it's not very related, it's related but distantly. Basically, you have genetic inheritance and you have past lives. So past lives are from your soul, which incarnates into different bodies, incarnates into different bodies, and it is sequential usually. First incarnation, then the second, then third, and then, and then hundreds of incarnations. Many of them on Earth, but some of them could be on other planets, or and some of them, of them could be in, in other species, but mostly in humans on Earth. Uh, but uh, again, yes? The, does the DNA from your past lives transfer in some of the, the bodies? Ah, good question. I wanted to talk about that. Uh, I don't think DNA transfers into new bodies, um, no. But I think when their spirit chooses, the soul chooses where to connect next time, they choose the bodies which are more compatible. Uh, and um, and uh, there should be some sort of compatibility. It's much easier to incarnate into there. So if it is, uh, if you had alien uh, ancestry, to better function, you possibly would choose a body which has this alien ancestry. Like if you had been an alien, like Yael for a while, and then you came to Earth, it would be much easier to incarnate in uh, humans which has have a Yael background, say 5% of Yael, so you better are uh, tied to your body because, because it's nice to be better integrated into the body. Again, there is... I'm sure there is more hidden, hidden interactions, but uh, on a primary level, the DNA is more or less fixed in the body. Now, now we come to the um, to the uh, nature of reality, where the spirits have certain control over events here, especially random events. So things, if you uh, see random events here, what is random to us in 3D is under control of the spirits in higher dimension. And that relates to mixing of the DNAs of two parents. So if the soul wants to incarnate in the, uh, as a child of two parents, they have a choice which pieces of DNA to combine to create a new body. So in this sense, they can pick and choose better patterns for their incarnation. So in this sense, a soul has a say, a soul has a say which patterns to pick from two parents. They, they have the, that capacity of designing their own genome. How about that? And possibly they have also helpers who, who do that for them, like intelligent spiritual genetic engineers who design the new child from the parent DNA. But, but that is seems to be random from the scientific mainstream scientific perspective, and uh, we know f that 99% or more of the DNA the child has actually matches the parents. It's very rare when when the children don't match their parents' DNA. 50% from one parent, 50 from another. By the way, I had a I had a sample. At some point, I did the analysis and. You know, in mainstream lab, we had uh, an example, and it might, of course, it could be a mess up, but but it might be real that the mother had five children and wasn't related to any of them. <laughs> wasn't usually the father is not related, but that was the mother who wasn't related to the children. And I think we even asked to resample, and I think I might be already making it up, but. But but there was there were cases when mother wasn't related to their five children. It's really hard to <laughs> to figure yeah, out. Yeah, I saw I saw a story like that on the Discovery Channel. Uh huh. 
Yeah, I mean, the, the, there is like simplistic explanation that some mothers are, it's called um, mosaic. So when you take the DNA from the blood, it's, um, they, they basically are hybrid. They are a very simplistic hybrids where you have uh, pieces of body from one genome and pieces of body from another genome. Basically, make mixed up developments like it just happens. And, and then maybe that would be the explanation. But, but it was <laughs> pretty funny to, to look at that and, you know, see, can see can, yeah, just, just, just a, an anecdote from or how you call it. All right, so um, past lives, basically, um, it's not fully true. It's the simplification that every next life is, is, um, is just the same soul that, that it was before. It's more sophisticated. It's <laughs> where the soul uh, gives, incarnates again. It's not just it's coming into the new body. It's more like giving birth to a new subsoul. How about that? Finally, I defined it pretty well. It's every time the soul incarnates in a new body, it actually gives birth to a version of itself. It makes a copy of itself. So the old soul, the old the previous incarnation doesn't disappear. It becomes a part of the new. It's like as you you become part of your child. The soul when it incarnates, it becomes part of the new soul which incarnates. So it's it's it is the same over soul, the same your higher self, same personality, the same experience of the past lives. Many times people inherit their talents from the past life. Some some prodigies who uh, have different talents in a very young age, they have these talents because they inherit it on a spiritual level from the past life. If the soul knows something, the new person knows something. And that is just an illustration that the brain is not exactly a thinking machine. The brain is not exactly a storage for the memory. The brain is reading and writing apparatus which reads and writes the information from and to the other dimension, from ethereal dimension. So whatever the soul knows, it, it uh, is read and delivered here and, uh, and the other way around. And, uh, you know, we can go into depth of that, but basically the brain is connecting to their higher knowledge all the time. We, always are connected to this spirit level mind which is present. You can see in the eyes of the person if the higher spirit is present or not. Like autistic people or mm, let's do Alzheimer's people, the people who don't remember anything, their soul is not always present. They are just left alone to their physical mind and that's, you know, the, the physical mind it has a property of Alzheimer's person, not remember anything and not thinking clearly. It's just a thinking machine without the spirit being present. And then you can see that they come to senses sometimes and uh, the soul is present and then you talk to the real person. Okay. The fractal, the idea of the fractal. So the fractal in geometry is when uh, something, a figure, can create a copy of itself. Usually it's a smaller or bigger copy. And sometimes it's the copy which is inside the figure which is a copy of that figure which create, can create another copy. So these fractals are very interesting. They are often observed in nature when the things are reproduced. The children are, are in a way the copy of the parents and they make their own copies. The children are our fractals, fractal copies in a way. And we are fractal copies of God. We are fractal copies of God. Our higher self is a fractal copy of God, and we are a fractal copies of our higher self. So we carry uh, everything that our higher self knows is somewhat accessible to us. The powers of the Creator are somewhat accessible to us because we are made from the same stuff. It doesn't mean that our Creator was has a human form, but it means that we are created in many ways from the Creator. We are inside the Creator. We are its um, infinite time great, great, great children of the Creator. 
and as the creator has a freedom of choice it's fractal copies have the freedom of choice and we have freedom of choice and this freedom of choice is very respected all right now I just needed to repeat that again you inherit your uh, DNA from your physical ancestors and then you inherit your experiences from your spiritual past lives which are your spiritual ancestors and these are two parallel developments or not parallel two two different so, developments yes so do you think that we inherit some of our our traits our behaviors from our past lives of course absolutely and from our physical ancestors as well <clears throat> both, in both directions we inherited through genetic physical inheritance and from through spiritual genetic inheritance basically it's we are genetically connected to our past lives they are part of our new design we contain our past lives in uh, our chakras and our etheric bodies so we are connected to them as well so there is spiritual inheritance and physical genetic inheritance I was also wondering um, <clears throat> is it when we reincarnate, um, I don't know if you just said that or not, but when we reincarnate, is it possible that we may look similar or have similar physical traits to our former past selves? Like, say if there was, like, somebody, um, like, like, say Abraham Lincoln, say Abraham Lincoln is reincarnated, um, and we found the person who he reincarnated as is would it be possible that they share the same physical traits? Do you understand? Yes, what yes. Um, again, it is a choice of the soul to which genetic design to incarnate. Very often I would say they might uh, choose the same traits and even if they chose different traits, a lot of uh, traits uh, happen during development. So the child is very has very universal, a uh, very universal shape. And as, as the child develops, there is much more that happens later, and that can be influenced by the soul, which which is connected to this body. So yeah. th that can can be uh, more like epigenetic. It's called epigenetic. There is basic sequence, and there is something which is produced by experience and by by the soul as well. The soul can influence how the child develops. So even if the original design was basic, it can. Uh, then build the uh, the traits of the past life. Um, it's uh, but you know the, the the lives happen in different. Uh, it's male female. It alternates. There can be any 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 uh, gender and uh, any race, any location, and okay. very often it's very interesting. You look at completely different race and recognize a type of person which you know from uh, from your race. Like you look at a different race, but there are traits very similar, so you think maybe they are related because they have, they have different color, they have different genetic ancestry, but you recognize that would be the the actor or the friend or a person you know from exactly. our race, which is uh, which is uh, just happen to have a different color and a little bit of traces, uh, you know, little bit of their you know whatever other race, but but still there is so much of of this typical thing, which I would maybe relate to a soul group, maybe soul group. Okay. So, but also, show, yeah. So, if I showed you a picture of of me in a past life, would would you be able to tell me if if, if you felt like it looked like I like don't know. you felt me? I think it's more personality than physical appearance. I think it's more okay. vi vibration is is much more stronger than physical appearance. Yeah, because I didn't think it, it looked like me. Um, um, but yeah, yeah, I, I think it's more that, and it seems also the personality traits also get some of them get carried. I guess it depends on what what the soul decides uh, at the time. Yes, it wants to learn and how the lessons are going to be learned. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh, again, it's it's uh, you know 
we are talking about things which have been researched, but you know, th such tiny details, it's really hard to to get answers to that. It's you know, I don't have as an investigator, I don't have much evidence one way or another. But when I speak to the spirits, I you often ask about these questions, and whatever they tell me, I tell you now. So it's it's reconstruction from what I learned from the spirits directly, or by reading books of uh, Michael Newton and others on that topic. Michael Newton, Newton, the Journey of the Soul and the Destiny of the of the Soul. Uh, wonderful books on the topic. Okay. Yeah, because I had done a picture and I. I didn't know it was me. I did it two years ago, and then at some point, you know, so people started asking me who was that, and I said I don't know. Then eventually, I thought, okay, I think that's me in a past life. And eventually, I found out recently that it's me at Machu Picchu. Mm. That's interesting. Mm. That's interesting. I understand, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Let's discuss uh, any questions. I think I, I covered most of their... Oh, I didn't finish, so the volunteering thing. So at our side, you can volunteer for visiting the colony, uh, donating your DNA to get hybrid children up there, and uh, our friends keep keep the ch bring up the children in very good conditions. They have much richer life than we have on our Earth. They are in the free world, and we are here locked down. So our children, hybrid children, they are the children of the universe and can travel, have the freedoms, have education, have great lives. Unfortunately, they miss us. They want to be with their human parents and be communicate with human parents, which is which communication is quite limited. Uh, but otherwise, so otherwise, it's uh, it's a very great way to contribute our DNA and and more than that, our love to the universe. Next thing you can invite the infusions of um, alien DNA from friendly species into yourself. And how this happens is um, they explain basically that they use uh, holographic projections. Basically, they teleport, transport, beam down the images of future cells. And the cells materialize gradually in the body, and um, they carry more of alien DNA and uh, incorporate and materialize here in the body. And usually that would be for the brain, they, they, but other organs as well. And they kind of uh, put them there, and then they activate this DNA, so you get certain percent of alien DNA in your body <clears throat> working. And this brings new qualities, mostly uh, spiritual qualities. Hey, Max, do you mind if yes. I ask a question about the hybrid children? Yes, thank you. Um, what species of hybrid children are coming out of the, this particular project? Uh, this would be hybrids between us, Lyrans, Pleiadians, Yael, Arcturians, uh, Fendorians, and Lashunda friendly reptilians. Uh, this, this would be individuals. It's not a huge project. Its project is, you know, counts maybe tens, hundreds of people, not, not more than that. So these are individuals yet. Some of them are placed on uh, motherships. Uh, some of them are placed on planets, and some of them travel between. They are they are free and have very nice. Um, environment, we ask that they are brought up in family environment because some of the civilizations they like uh, have le more of communal upbringing of children, like Yael have communal upbringing of children. So we ask that our hybrid children are brought up in families. And uh, they are basically uh, given um, surrogate, surrogate parents. And unlike in human case, the surrogate parents are actual parents of the children. So the child has uh, the DNA from us here, also from DNA from their surrogate parents. It would be like three parent hybrid or four parent hybrid or even more parent hybrid of specific individuals. So we for these children could be not 
50% as usual, like for human children, we are 50% parent, 50% donate, 50% DNA. And for hybrid children, we could donate maybe 25% of DNA. So we would be related to them more like grandparents, more than uh, direct parents. Um, is it a good answer? Do, do you want to know more? No, that was perfect. Thank you very much, Max. You're welcome. I have, I have a bit of a question, too, um, regarding the hybrid children. If I gave you a scenario like I was told um, that I had um, teenage hybrid children, well, in that instance, and that they were, and that they were part, um, and that they were part gray. Now, uh -huh. zeta grays. Now, zeta grays aren't a part of the human colony program, are they? You say zeta? Zeta. Mm -hmm. uh, no. And how would I? Um, I'm 35, so how? Um, so then, would that have been like a situation where they, where they, took it without my knowledge? You know, the DNA. Yes, uh, Zetas usually don't ask, okay. and uh, so they 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 are very. Uh, they they are known to be manipulating time a lot, and not only Zetas, but Zetas are especially time manipulating. They are not actually from this time, not from this reality, and no, not even from reality of our other friends. They are from different, completely different reality. Okay. So they, you know, if the, the children have are of any age, doesn't really matter because it doesn't correspond to our time. Okay. At all, basically. The sequence of events usually corresponds, but they can uh, stretch and squeeze time at wish. So, uh, okay. you know, the children could grow up with the speed of maybe 10, fa 10 times faster than our children. And not only grow faster, but they have full life experience. So basically their, their time space is much denser in this reality. So for us, it, it uh, one year passes and they get full 10 years of, uh, of okay. life experience uh, in just in different dimension. Uh, Zetas, usually they are not very nice to humans. Not That's what very... kind of worries me. They give me the creeps and I and to hear that I have hybrid children by Z Zetas and knowing that they're not in the program was kind of worrisome to me. Okay. So, yeah. I'm, 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 thank you. I'm trying to help here. Um, so Zetas are not very nice, but they are not very bad either. Zetas are in between. Uh, they have this panic meta mentality, tragic mentality that their civilization is dying and that uh, they are saving their civilization and the only way to save the civilization is to uh, hybridize everywhere with everything. Um, and um, uh, and you know that is also to be respected. That you know they they are in a way that they are us uh, completely screw, screw screwing up their genetics and uh, degrading genetically to the to the level that they uh, lost much of the humanity and started dying off. So it is in a way it is us in a distant future on a bad timeline. So we okay. respect that. So we uh, um, and also not all the zetas are, are negative. There are different types of zetas. So so um, so it, it is also possible that you are dealing not with the very bad zetas. You might be dealing with the positive ones as well. Now um, um, it doesn't. Uh, I think other hybrid species have been also created by zetas, but in, uh, but then they become independent and. Uh, and they are not enslaved by Zetas in any way. They are independent. So Zetas serve uh, one of the purposes. They mix up with other species, but they, then, they, uh, then they give birth to new free civilizations, which is nice. Um, also, as you become part of human colony, you might petition to and check where your children's, children are located and make sure that you know they're treated properly and request that if they are not placed in a proper place that they are released to our friends if it is appropriate. Okay. So uh, that is you know 
that your your choice is also respected as a parent, and um, and you might just write a letter to humancolony. You know this. Uh, sign up to go at gmail. com. Sign up to go at gmail. com and uh, and write your thoughts on that in that or official request in that direction. Okay. Thank because you. I don't know where they are. I can't really. It would be nice to ask Jim first where they are. Maybe are they already in a in a free uh, nurturing environment, and you shouldn't worry. It's, I have no it's, idea. It's not necessarily bad. Uh, okay. I, I, I'm not that afraid of Zetas. I, I don't invite them, but but um, my friend uh, said that you know being with Zetas is still you know who is abductee is still be way better than being with Nordics or with. Uh, even he said, even being with reptilians is way better than being with Nordics, who who were nasty to her and were very cynical. Okay. So uh, you know there are different gradations. Also, it's all sort of a game, sort of a game, uh, and uh, you create your reality. Especially in this uh, highest levels of existence, you create your reality. So when you are in balance and in peace, and you wish for the best and you pray, that. Uh, Alien reality is much more subjected and uh, fluid and benefits from your prayers than this physical one. So by just by praying and intending well, you might create much better uh, reality with hybrid children. I wouldn't recommend worrying much. I would recommend to be proactive and building this new uh, game plan because it's fluid and flexible. It's fluid and flexible. Be creative. Okay. Thank you much. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Max, has yes. there ever been a um, has Garfinier ever done a hybrid that it's mainly human and then just you know twenty twenty five percent of of a Lyran, let's say. I don't know. I I don't have any data on that. Uh, why not? I think it's pretty straightforward. What's wrong with it? I mean, it's pretty straightforward. Yeah, I don't know because you know at that point it would be considered mostly human, right? So. Uh, um. Yeah. Again, it depends how you can quantify the percentages because it's you know what do you count? Because I think physical appearance is a very small part of the genome. You can like. Uh, maybe like one percent of the of the genome defines physical appearance, and everything else is everything else like the uh, the behavior, thinking, immunity, everything else which is not appearance. Appearance is not uh, that such a big deal. So if you're talking about appearance, it doesn't really matter. I mean, yeah, yellow are very diverse. I heard uh, some of them look like humans, and some of them look like grays. So can they can they actually play with the DNA enough so that let's say they you would see a hybrid and you say he's you know totally human but he has a lot of the abilities of let's say Lyrans have. I would say that would be absolutely yeah logical. It would be very logical. How about that? Okay. Yes, the appearance is um, is easy to change. Like. Yeah, Yale and Pleiadians are changing appearance at will. I mean, if they want to change the color of their skin, it's just done like that. Oh. So, like for for, Ple for Pleiadian, it's technological. For Yale, it's it's natural. They don't need technology to change the color of their sk skin or to appear or disappear and or ch to change shape. Hey, Max, would you, would you mind yes. um, going in and talking about about that about about the abilities that that you know of that the, the various hybrid children have. Uh-huh. Thank you. All right. Telepathic abilities. Um, um, to have full telepathic abilities, you have to be within telepathic culture. It's like learning a language. It's like learning a language. So human Children might have some telepathic abilities, uh, but um, you know they have to be ex exercising uh, exercising that skill somewhere. So the ones who visit human colonies, they have that opportunity. 
some of them are talking to aliens, and this way they um, exercise their talk, talking to the aliens right here on Earth, and this way they develop. As I understand telepathy, it mostly comes from the books of uh, a book from the book of Adrian Dvir, um, X3 Extraterrestrial Medicine. Basically, the telepathy goes through other, another dimension. Obviously, it's it's not. It, it's not physical, obviously. Uh, and so you connect from your physical brain to your etheric brain and maybe a few more steps away from the body to, towards the spirit. There, there is a transfer from information through the spirit world and it comes back from the spirit to ethereal body to the brain. And that's why you can telepathically connect to the aliens which are very far away, you know, and then you can astral travel and so on. So, and in remote viewing, again, the distance and uh, the barriers that block the, the fields, they don't really affect much the transfer of <laughs> information. Excuse me. All right. Other abilities. Uh, so... Yeah, some some people have disabilities later, and again, um, it's it's normal for a person to develop spirituality gradually. Basically, you you in a childhood you have some innate abilities, then then you still grow spiritually, and by more advanced age, you could be more advanced in your uh, different psychic and spiritual growth, and it's lifelong growth and integration of the body and and uh, and the spiritual bodies okay other abilities telekinesis i think it's it's sort of i don't think it's practical it's more like uh, like exercise just just one one of the proofs you have that it is it is real uh, healing abilities i think are absolutely great uh, healing is is um, uh, we are in the uh, uh, a matrix which is designed by the spirits. It has, has been built from the spirit world, but again, it was built from bottom up and from top down. So the spirits build the first dimension, second dimension, and the third dimension, develop that planet, develop that uh, world. But there are certain spiritual limitations here, and one of them is the veil which separates us from the higher dimension, which separates us uh, blocks our psychic abilities, and on Earth the veil is one of the strongest. It's really hard to penetrate it. So, uh, healing is one of the ways to penetrate the veil because it is beneficial. It's benevolent. It connects you to God. It helps the whole race to become nicer, and that's why the angels and creators of this world allow healing as a way to penetrate the veil to do spiritual stuff so so obviously it's um, you know light workers the one of the easiest ways for light workers to get hands on spirit is to do the energetic healing like reiki qigong yoga ayurvedic uh, acupuncture acupressure and many other energetic energy healing uh, arts it's um, it's using crystals, natural herbs, and stuff. It's it's all very spiritual. Very, it's a practice which connects you to the spiritual world in a very tangible way. Uh, remind me any any other quality of the, you know, autistic qualities. Uh, many of the, Yael, Yael and other uh, hybrids. They they are very autistic. Uh, when I did Reiki on some of the autistic teenagers, I discovered that the uh, crown chakra is crazily open, like 100 times bigger open than a normal person. And that makes them so vulnerable to things. They are trying to connect to things and people, and they get a lot of darkness through the open chakras. It's not filtered. It's too open. So they cannot function because, because they become overwhelmed. Also, they are so telepathic that they cannot speak because for them it is, you know, they send the energies, they send the 
they communicate telepathically, why do they need to speak? And that's why they become autistic and dysfunctional in, uh, in physical society. Uh, there are crystal children, indigo children. Uh, I heard the definition that indigo children are the ones, indigo, the ones which, not necessarily children, indigo people are the ones which are spiritually advanced, but also they are transformers. They are actively seeking to, to transform the world, and often they bring the conflict uh, and um, a conflict to the to the world during the transformation. While crystal ones are detached and um, and are not and are much more peaceful and um, not um, doing the transformation through through the conflict. It was just one of the definitions. I don't know. I don't think these terms are well defined. So some of the light workers are very autistic, and some some others are not. It also depends how many lifetimes uh, of past of past past lives you had on Earth. So people who had tons of experience of on Earth, they they know very well how to navigate the physical life. And people who are new to Earth, who had uh, most of the lives on uh, other planets, they might have just trouble navigating here because they have different habits. Like, again, it's a uh, YouTube video, Commander, Commander Sunny Seti is uh, a gray, I think, a yellow incarnation, first time on Earth. She's quite autistic, quite suffering because everything is very painful and different for her. It's not the world she likes to, uh, she used to, to live in. Most of the aliens, they are very connected to the others. It's very selfless, not selfish, very selfless existence where everything is done communally and if there, and every, and even the rules are respected. So when you come to human society, there is so much egotism, so much personal desires and so little societal good that uh, they feel very betrayed and also they feel very lonely because they used to be connected to the collective consciousness and here they are lonely. It's, it's very tough on them. Any more questions? Thank you for that, Max. Yeah, some some of the children they talk to animals and um, to spirits. They see orbs, see plants. It's all you know, see see uh, energies. Uh, they are natural healers. My friend, my uh, Reiki teacher uh, teaches Reiki for children, so children learn basics of the Reiki and and um, are very enlightened and. Um, Many of my healing friends, they work with autistic children and with autistic families. Usually, uh, it takes two to get an autistic child, two, a pair of the mother and the child. Usually, it's very controlling, very physical mother. Maybe it's, maybe the mother is also spiritual, but, but in those pairs, the mother is often overly controlling and, the child, and drags the energy from the child, so the child becomes very dependent and cannot function independently. So when you want to treat a pair of mother-child with autistic child, you usually should start with a, with a parent and uh, try to help the parent to release some of the grip on the child, let the child breathe. And often it's the hardest thing to do because usually those mothers are not not flexible. They're not flexible. They are so used to that coexistence of uh, a child being dependent that they, you know, they find that they just don't want to release the grip. So that continues. Um, you know, we observe it all the time. It's it's kind of even the classics in normal psychology. Yeah, I guess it takes um, it takes art to to heal that that disbalance, and uh, sometimes you just have to take time and uh, gradually help them to build new new trust and new relationship. I think I'm basically done. The DNA explained. Uh, just, just one more question. Yes, go ahead. Max, on the DNA, when Gerfurt Nier gives us DNA, uh -huh. that is on the, on the physical level, right? 
Uh, it's, they start from non-physical, they create kind of ghosts of the cells with new DNA and then gra they gradually activate it and make them physical. So they, oh. again, I didn't measure, nobody measured it, at least in mainstream science, but if, they, if the mainstream science started sequencing us and taking samples from different parts of the body, they should be discovering new pieces of DNA which are not part of the human genome which I don't recommend anyone to do because then it would be the question of the rights of the hybrids and it's a big mess <laughs> <laughs> yeah I won't be doing that anytime soon <laughs> <laughs> and yeah also on like for, an in, for the individual if you if you offer to do that you don't know what they might do to you you know you, they might keep you somewhere to monitor you or something you know I didn't understand what you said, but I wouldn't focus on negativity. Um, we have, uh, it's now a mess as Alex Collier describes, it's uh, lots of uh, projects uh, which are largely independent and um, some of these projects have very nice people, very advanced science and so on, and some of these projects are just very selfish and uh, secret projects and uh, uh, they, they just want to grab as much much control and as much press, uh, resources as they can. But overall, right now, the, there is a lightening of the lightening improvement and lightening of the moods in the in the overall control of the world. <clears throat> Although there is some negativity, but more and more people become educated uh, one way or another in, in who are in charge and uh, you know. Just the generations change, all generations who wanted to um, dominate and uh, the earth at, at, at any cost now are replaced with people who really are benevolent. They might have some of negative intents, but in, in general they want humanity to continue. And so, so there, there are good hopes. There is a lot of people who are more or less enlightened in power and more people are coming there and more people are awakening from from that especially because in recent times there is um, expunge was it the word the the bad guys the bad aliens have been expunged in my in many ways we had much more influence of Zetas Orion negatives or Nordic negatives uh, Anunnaki negatives uh, on human politics and more recently they were largely removed so we have now mostly humans controlling the earth not the alien negative aliens controlling the earth so negative humans are at least they're humans it's already nice and uh, gradually it becomes more and more transparent and uh, and our alien friends also help that transparency and basically we can see how the humanity awakens gradually I'm playing a new game it's actually started to be boring but but at some point it was very nice. Uh, you, it's called Ingress. Ingress. Check it out if you have a smartphone. Install that game. It's free. It is. I think it feel. I feel it was. It is built by very enlightened people who actually were authors of uh, Google Earth and also the project which collected different historical artifacts on the surface of the of the planet. Now ingress is you walk around the city and look at different human artifacts and you take them over and there are, there are two different factions. One is supporting aliens and one is against aliens. It's called resistance. So pro-aliens are green and resistance is blue. And these factions have the same, uh, same resources, same sort of fighting capacities so they take over different uh, objects which are called portals so basically there is a, an artificial reality built on these portals and um, and then you connect the portals build your field take the territory um, so on the top of this real world real physical world there is that uh, artificial virtual reality world so you have to actually have to walk and press buttons but but you can actually look at these objects and and walk around so this is one of the first games or the first game which which actually 
promotes healthy walking on the streets. It's one thing which is wonderful. And second thing, I suspect that this game has been has two intended or unintended consequences. First, all the portals are mapped now. It's like every tiny artifact, every unusual stone is mapped and is part of the global map. And I believe the stronger the portal, the more fighting is happening for it. So, uh, so that is finding the portals. I think is the side effect of this game, intended or unintended. And second, we can see how the pro alien faction, whether it wins or loses at different parts of the globe. And um, I think it corresponds roughly, roughly to how the light workers, pro alien light workers and anti alien resistance is actually distributed on the globe. So when you look at the map of this game, who took over the different parts of the of the uh, globe and the cities, you can see actually the how the global consciousness, it, it is a map of global consciousness, pro and anti-alien global consciousness, more or less related. Oh, I think it's exciting to see it like graphed. It's exciting. All right, let's do the commercial. Um, uh, I invite people to write to me, max at humancolony.org, uh, offering your materials for the newsletter and your volunteered help, your voluntary, if you want to volunteer for to the work on the newsletter. And the, I will include you and contact me on Skype, max 204507 to be, become part of the newsletter project. So we create nice piece of, of newsletter and then it we publish it on uh, different sites as a, as a little booklet and also it becomes part of the archive so people who come here they can read uh, past news and past introductions in more organized fashion. I think it's wonderful. And also Guru Dan and um, Robbie, our wonderful voices, volunteer to read uh, this newsletter in real time to make a webinar reading the newsletter and maybe commenting, so it would be just a fun uh, visual uh, uh, release of the newsletter. And Danny, thanks Danny, who is our ar archive person who uh, annotates all the videos. Uh, he also uh, is very interested in creating a, a television version of the newsletter, but a television news service for the light workers. That would be wonderful. So that's uh, wonderful developments. Um, we are part of the humancolony.org. We uh, search YouTube for Hucola, H U C O L O, and you find our videos. Join us, become part of our uh, daily hangouts, and donate at humancolony.org for uh, web website support and for our channelers. And you all can also. Uh, Reserve a channel, a paid channeling session with Jim, Kim, and several other channelings, uh, channelers who offer their private sessions, and you can speak to the aliens in person. Uh, stay positive. I bless you all. Thank you very much for watching and listening. Thank you. I thank those who joined the webinar, and um, I bless you all. Bless be your path and. Uh, I wish your nights and days will be full of positive interactions with aliens and spirits. And I wish your earthly 3D life will become becomes integrated with your high high dimensional life and you become successful on every level to create a wonderful re reality that you like. My Thank you so much, Max. Much appreciated. Yes, thank you so so much. All right, goodbye. Goodbye. Good night. Good night.